Welcome to Paradise. This is my Paradise. This is the class of skill again on geometric finance. We talk about the magic. Why is it called the magic? Because normally we learn accounting differently and do the financial analysis in very difficult way. That I want to make cut the long story short, which is called CAP. If you want to do analysis, you must put care. In this specific matters, care has the meaning of capital, asset, revenue, and earnings. If you know the care, then you can know the debt, which is debt is the difference between the assets and the capital, and the expenses will be the difference between the revenue deducted by the earnings. So by using that, you only try to measure the care of the corporation and then you can identify the debt and the expenses. The reason why? Why should we use the debt? First, to make it easy. Because the business of the company are various. So we must look at the common financial measures that will be accessed in every businesses every kind of company and you can add them all together you can combine and you can try to replace one after another without the simplification of the criteria the normal common financial statement which is balance sheet and income statement you will become very difficult to make analysis that's why for the common sense you must care let's talk about the pride of America, which we have the IBM, McDonald's, and Boeing. Let me try to analyze all together and let me try to also examine, examine the option to make it together, both in merger terms or in acquisition. First, let me analyze the IBM. IBM has this kind of care, so we can identify the debt and the expenses. And for the IBM, we can see that the return on assets is high, return on equity is very high. So this is the strength of IBM. For McDonald's, It has another method, but it is a cash generator. And we, it is the sleeping giant. So we try to make all the things combined all together. We can try three options to make those three together, which is Boeing, IBM, and McDonald's. Only Boeing and IBM, or only IBM and McDonald's. If they combining, so no capital escape. Every capital is still there. They both has the money inside that. They both has the equity, and they run the company together. So that is the addition, one added by another. If those three, so all the three exist all together and living for the future together. The little bit different case is the case of acquisition between the IBM and McDonald's. So the one who has bigger capital can pay to the smaller capital so that the total capital is no longer those two but only remaining the bigger one and the smaller one taken out. It is not good for the business because the money is no longer there but it will be very good for the owner because they can get cash very quickly. Other options is merger acquisition between McDonald's and Boeing. At this matter, so the biggest cap the bigger capital is still there and the smaller capital will be taken up. This one is IBM and Boeing. So the bigger capital is still there and IBM, Boeing and McDonald's all together so that IBM can buy McDonald's, McDonald's can buy the Boeing. So 
to the external party, it's only IBM here. But to every business component here, like the debt and the business relation revenue, they can see this as a three company, but only one substance. The capita is just a single one, but they play on the three company. Then the problem will be, which one is the best? It's such a tricky question. Because it depends on what objective are you going to. First, if you want to try the maximization, which is meaning the maximum asset productivity, then at this point, you can see that merger between IBM and McDonald's will be better. Because IBM, they do the machine business, high tech, but McDonald's generate the cash. Because McDonald is a very strong player in terms of return on assets. So even together with IBM, still better. But IBM, it is not as good as McDonald as a cash generator or in asset productivity matters. Second, for the stock exchange, for the owner, which is only has a short commitment to the profit, they try to maximize the profit. It means that the smaller the capital, that will be better in the portion to the owner. Because normally, if you have placing no capital at all inside that, all the profit will be unlimited. But if you still placing your capital there, you must think how to save your capital. And the profit will be compared to the capital, it won't be very good. For this kind, normally, the finance director and the stock exchange consideration will be computed on return on equity. So it's better to set the equity as small as possible as long as it is permitted by the regulation and you can enjoy the maximum profit compared to the capital. For a debt management, even debt to equity ratio and debt to asset ratio, what you need is try to make a secure condition that you can buy all the obligations in the proper time. So that will be the work of the cashier or the debt management process inside the company. In the sense of the business owner, normally they try to find stable enough capital compared to the whole one which is normally if the capital is in the big portion compared to the assets, so less interest expenses could be paid. But of course, more risk could be bared by the owner because that's his own money. But the problem is this one is saving the interest. And normally the management like this because the bonus and profit sharing will be better because no interest will be paid by using the capital asset ratio at the bigger level of the number amount of proportion. Then let's talk about another thing. Which composition will be better for the market? So we try to find a certain over and for a certain over the combination between IBM and Boeing and IBM Boeing with McDonald will be better for the market because they can make a greater asset turnover or greater revenue compared to the asset access. So this will be the option if you put marketing as your main consideration. For that profit margin and expense ratio, normally profit margin should be bigger, as big as possible, and expense ratio will be the small as possible. It means the efficiency of the capital. Normally, you try to find that this one, IBM and McDonald in merger and IBM and McDonald in acquisition, both of them will be considered as cost efficient. In the new net profit margin and expense ratio. So which one is better? Depends on where are you going to do. If you need the most pretty girl, you better marry the beauty girls. If you need the rich, inherited girl, you can 
except a little bit ugly, but more capital she has. And if you need some smarter girl, so even though she's not rich and she's not too beautiful because she cannot help and she has a beautiful mind, you can also choose, him, choose her as the option. So, which one is better comparing in the merger and acquisition here or the single individual company? It depends on the criteria you select. But what I want to say to you now is if you do the care, if you do the magic of geometric finance, you can do the analysis much faster. This is not a small company. This is three big companies and the combination in the merger and acquisition also a difficult option, but you can easily make decision and perfectly according to the criteria, according to the constraint given for decision making. That is the good and the magic of the geometric finance. Thank you.